it's your boy Bubba Dub. Welcome to Trash Talk. That's right, NBA Trash Talk All Star. We in Utah. It's going down. Let's go. Trash, 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 super trash, super. Welcome to Trash Talk, it's your boy Bubba Dub. Today we have a special guest. I'm talking about a real special guest. He's the originator of Trash Talking. Everybody, let's check this out. Refs, players, coaches on other team, fans. Yeah. He talked nonstop and, uh, and backed it up. Green roll guy. Zara's food on your mind. We had ingredients, recipe, now diet. <laughs> Are you hungry? I actually feel pretty good to be honest. And the foul is called. And a technical foul has been handed out. It is on Gary Payton. Ken Maurer was making the call on the Lakers. Make some noise. Give it up for my man, Gary Payton. Yeah. Yeah. GP, what's up, baby? Man, what's good? Man, it's good to be in your presence, bro. Uh, always, man, good to be in anybody's presence, hey, man, I especially you. yours, man. I got to give you kudos, man. You've been doing your thing, man. I appreciate that, I, man. You were all right. Hey, I appreciate it. I want to get straight to it with you. Get straight to it with you. Who in the NBA today remind you of you? Not a damn person. <laughs> I thought no one. I thought you finna say uh Pat Bev. I finna say trash. <laughs> trash. No, I can't do that, man. Nobody remind me of me. You know what I'm saying? Only person I give a little love to is my son. Most That's it. It's, it's, uh, and it's defensive wise. He don't play like me in, in, in offensive wise. Yeah. But nobody would compare to me. I'm shit. I was the only motherfucker that can do it. You know what I'm hey, saying? Hey, hey. Speaking of that, I seen you go back and forth with MJ too. Yeah, you know that. I ain't backing down to nobody. I ain't scared of nobody. I was getting at it. He put his pants on just like me. I do the same thing. He do the same thing. That's why I respect him because he came back at it. You know what I'm saying? I don't respect nobody if I go at them and they don't talk back. Because then that means it don't make it fun to me and it don't make it competitive. So what I do is, is I go at everybody and if I can get a sucker, I get a sucker. Hey, that, that's that's what I like. We, we don't have that in today's game. One fucker yeah. who want to go at somebody, want to yeah. compete. These motherfuckers, I get it. We homeboys. But on the court, motherfuckers, we fucking kill each other. I ain't fucking with them like that, man. I ain't changing my shirts with them at the end of the game. I ain't taking it off, man, and do all that crap, man. Get that shit when we in the locker room. I ain't trying to do all that. So when we on the floor, I'm going to kill them. I'm gonna go get at you. If my mama was on the floor, man, I'll kill her. Most you know what I what feel the same in my fucking way. Man, you know yeah. what I'm saying? She gonna try to get at me. I'm gonna get back at her. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm on that. I'm on that, man. We ain't friends on that bullshit. I'm just, I'm with it. I'm just with it. I'm just with what it is. Uh, who influenced you growing up, dog? My pops. My pops was a big dude, man, where he talked a lot of trash, man. He didn't take nothing from nobody, man. And I just was on the streets of Oakland, man. And I used to go to the, every neighborhood and try to get out on people. And when I get down on them, man, they want to fight. And my daddy was right there to get down with me and my brother. So I was always influenced by my pops to always stay strong, don't back down to nobody. One day, man, when I went home, one of the bullies on the block was trying to get at me, right? My daddy told me, man, he locked the door. He said, don't bring your ass in here until you get down with him on the, on the uh, lawn. Man, I went and got a line on him. We wrestled, man, we wrestled. He hit his head on the concrete, got knocked him out, and then I became a big bully on the, Damn. On the block. Damn. You know what I'm saying? So that's just the way it go, man. It, and that's how I grew up. I got the trash talking part down, but I can't fight. Well, we don't need to fight right now, man. Because they guns <laughs> right now, man. We ain't talking about no fight, man. We ain't talking about guns, man. We ain't doing all that. Man, fighting is over, man. When we was young, we can knuckle it up or whatever. Yeah, it for was sure. good, man. But yeah. right now, if you can't take my mouthpiece, Most definitely. get up out of here, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because if you talk, I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk yeah. right back. So it is what it is. Speaking of that, you know, these super teams for him, you know, you know, you was with the Lakers, but, you know, with Carl Malone on that team. Speak, how, how was that season when y'all lost to the Detroit um, Pistons? Pistons. How, how was that? You know, it was, it was kind of hard because, you know, Kobe was going through what he was going through. And then we had Shaq going through his thing with Dr. Buss, yeah. wanting to get a contract. So we didn't expect to have all of that. You know what I'm saying? We started off the season 18 and two. Then all of a sudden, Carl got hurt, and that hurt us. When Carl got hurt, it, it put us back because he was our leader. He was the one that kept us in, in, in line. I was the one that was always with Kobe. 
and then calls with Shaq. Yeah. So we kept everybody in line, but when he got hurt and he wasn't around his team, it really pushed us away. Because remember, Kobe missed about 40 games, yeah. Shaq missed about 44, and then Carl missed 62. So we was we was all bad, but we still had a, a good team and myself because I was a leader, and we still kept it going and, and, and reached the finals. But it was it was it was a, it was an experience. Everybody go through experience, yeah. and I love the experience because I got to know Kobe Bryant for who Kobe Bryant was. Speaking of, how was how was Kobe, man? Because you was how kind of like a mentor too, and why you was there. As yeah, well. everybody think of Kobe in a little different way because they think of what they hear. You can't judge a person by what you hear. You got to get to know a person yourself. Correct. I always tell people that. Don't ever go up to somebody and say, oh, he an asshole, he this and that. You don't even know that man. Get in or her. Get in and get to know her or him. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I did. I got to know him and I got to see the inside of Kobe Bryant. How passionate he was and why he did things. And that's what I loved about him. And it hurts me to the day that a young man his life was cut so short for that, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, he, he put a mark on his earth. I'm coming from being a superstar yeah. to being a role player and just do what I got to do. How's that I, transition? How's that? It's hard if you want it to be hard. But I understand what I'm, what I'm going through. I had a great career. I was the man. Correct. Now it was, it was getting to the end, and I had to understand I didn't want to play basketball no more anyway. I was just doing a favor for Shaq and Pat Riley. Yeah. And what happened was, I just said, yo, look, if I want to win a championship, let me just be the, be the, be an be a older guy and an older statement and do what I have to do. Yeah. And that's all I did. I just said, forget it. You know, it didn't change nothing. I was having fun. I was in Miami. I didn't care. It was all good. <laughs> I don't think people realize that you got to play for two great coaches, Phil Jackson and Pat Riley. What's the difference between the two? A lot different. I mean, Pat Riley is more of Strict. an ego type of dude. He'll relate to you. Phil Jackson is more of a mellow type of guy. He's the same way. He's just real laid back and kicked back, but he's not going to be as aggressive as Pat Riley. Yeah. Pat Riley is more of the, the militant type of guy. Yeah. Phil is going to give you a little leeway, but they're great minds, but they know how to put the X and the O's there. I think Phil is a better person of being at a person. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Trying to be a coach to yeah. that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Pat is be like, forget you, fuck you, you know what I'm saying? You gonna do it my way. Right. That's how it goes, though. So you got to relate to it. And with my mentality, I can relate to both of them. Because there wasn't nobody tougher than my daddy. So I didn't care about it. So I just related to it and I then I pushed on. Uh, trash talking, no. Um, the end of that. In, why you was in the NBA when you trash? What was some of the things you said to a player to just try to get under their skin? Like, I just, talk about their mama, their daddy, <laughs> I talk about their kids, I didn't give a shit. You know what I'm saying? Whatever was personal, I got at them. You know what I'm saying? So people today, nowadays, as you know, this generation is a little different. A they take really stuff sensitive, yeah. man, and then they want to take it to a limit. If I would say something, if like somebody would have came to me and said they was out with my wife one night, I would be like, shit, I was with your wife the same time. You know what I'm saying? I, would uh, really? I wouldn't even care. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Whatever your wife was doing, she yeah. yours was doing it with me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But these dudes take it so sensitive nowadays that they take it too personal. And then after the game, I'll be like, man, what's up? You want to go have a drink, man? Let's go kick it. And we'll kick it. Nowadays, these dudes taking it too personal. Uh, how, how do you see yourself playing in today's league, if you could? What, what, what would you think your stats would be in, in today's game right now? I'd be killing these motherfuckers, man. <laughs> I, you, know, you understand me? I'd be killing when them. You, that track. When, when, you, when you watch the game now, because you 6'3", six, 6'4", six, point guard, you was known to back players down. You see players today, they don't do that. They don't use their motherfucking skills. I don't understand it. Like, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of LeBron. I love him to death. But sometimes he had he look at hey, players on him. Get your big ass in the motherfucking paint, man. <laughs> I used to tell him that all the time. I say, man, post these motherfuckers' ass up and punish them, man. Yeah. But the game ain't like that. You know that. They want to shoot all these goddamn threes. Yeah. They want to be all finesse. You know what I'm saying? And then they let people dunk. You know what I'm saying? In my era, you dunk on motherfucker one time and start talking that shit, they're going to take your ass out of the air and body slam you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But in my era, if it was, I was here now, your mothers couldn't get me for 30 or down here, and I don't get there for 30 yeah, down yeah, here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to punish their ass in the, in the paint, and I'm going to make them, and I'm going to be talking shit to them. <laughs> be like, yeah, motherfucker, you going to get it over here, and I'm, I'm going to get you down over here. Yeah. But I'm going to try to get your ass over here. But that ain't the way it go this time, nowadays in this era. Yeah. You know, they want to play like the PlayStation. That's how that shit is. I ain't fucking with no PlayStation. Yeah. I'm fucking with real life, man. Fact, I'm trying fact. to get at your head, yeah. and I'm going to get at your helmet. 
So I'm gonna go back at you. They always throw the ball over. They switch everything. I just can't switch everything. I gotta stay with you and play you. That's who I. That's how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get through it. I'm gonna get down with you because I can't say I switched on you and you got off on him and then all of a sudden you know you don't guard me. Let's go right, each Because the best don't don't go out the best no motherfucking mother. It don't. They be hiding certain trying to rest for offense and shit. No. Only certain of them do that. And then they hide them because they play zones now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's yeah, a zone yeah, in the yeah, game now. Yeah. You know, you can get over, stay over on one side and just sit there and it'd be like that. See, an our day, that would have been a legal defense. defense. But it ain't going to work that way. But, you know, different errors. Everybody got a different error and we got to live with it. We're going to watch it for now and then and whatever we're going to do. But, you know, in my era, I was just, we was a little bit more harder. Switching gears outside of the NBA, off the court, you got one of the hardest weed strands <laughs> out right now. How did that shit come about, man? You know what? It's just being blessed to be who I am. You know, the, the boy Burner, my boy Burner, yeah. the one who runs cookies and stuff like that, he from the back. So they yeah. did a strand and it came out 2020. Yeah. And he thought about his OG, yeah. man. Sure. He thought about his OG, called me, he was like, man, look here, man, I got a strand that's gonna be dominate. I want you to, to, to do all the stuff for it. I want you to tell me what it, what it need to be. I designed the package. I did all of that, oh, put no. it all there. We named it Gary Payton, the picture is from me. You know what I'm saying? I did all that. He let me be that creative guy. And then it so happened because everybody loved me from where I'm at. And, how I keep it real, oh, everybody got down with it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and it would have been one of the hottest strains in a, for a long time. Mm. What the name Glove come from? My cousin, 1993, man, I was I was playing against Kevin Johnson. Kevin Johnson was the, the premier point guard during that time. He was averaging, right? yeah, for yeah, Phoenix. He was, out, he was averaging about 24, 25. And I was holding him to like 13 in that he series. That he his ass up, you know what I'm saying? And then, I called, my cousin called me, talking about glove, glove, glove. I was like, what the hell is glove? And hung up the phone. Damn. He called me back. He was like, look, man, cuz, don't hang up the phone, man. I was like, why the hell you call me glove? He was like, man, me and my frat guys up in here, man. He said, man, you got Kevin Johnson like a baseball in the glove. You got his ass wrapped up so tight. <laughs> and I was like, that's the bomb, man. That's People good. don't like to talk about this because it's MJ, but in them finals a couple games, you had his ass in that glove, too. They, he ain't going to admit it. Yeah. He ain't going to admit it. But yeah. you played some of the toughest defense I ever seen on him in that series. Well, what it was what it was about is me being having making it tough for him. A great scorer and a great player, you can't stop. You can't stop none of them. You can slow him down. He was averaging 30 on us, and all I wanted to do was slow him down. Just get him to get tired, take shots that he wasn't supposed to take. And you know what? In, 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 in that, in that uh, series of, of his, 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 his documentary, mm. I really didn't care. I, I cared about what he said because I wouldn't respect him anymore if he said I shut him down because he wouldn't been a hog like me. You know what I'm saying? And I knew he wasn't going to say that. So I respect him more for doing that. But we all know, everybody know, me and him know, we play each other, we play each other hard, and that's what it was. Well, you know the great debate, and I'm big ones, I always debating who's the GOAT, this and that. And um, so, you know, some don't say MJ, some don't say LeBron, some don't say Kareem. But for you, who is that guy that you know just for you? Like, he's that guy, man. Just you know what? I don't really rate the GOAT people because we all GOATs. Yeah, correct. Because we all get in. And then we all didn't play in the same generation. Now nah, we did. But if I'm going to say my favorite basketball player that I think that, that set the tone for all of us all of is Will Chamberlain. Will Chamberlain, okay. Will Chamberlain was the shit. Who all records he, everybody breaking? And he was fucking too. <laughs> I'm like, oh, 25,000. Yeah, they, he was getting it in. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? He set records on everything <laughs> he did. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I'm with I'm with Will, Will Chamberlain, man. I, I think Will Chamberlain was the man. Okay. I feel like so. Gary, this is, this is the part of the show where we play a game called Trash or Fire. Okay. I'm going to ask you something. You can either say it's trash or you can say it's fire. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. You sure? Uh, for hell Michael yeah. Michael Jordan when he was with the Wizards. Trash. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. The referees did, in today's time. Trash. <laughs> uh, the, my, living in Miami. Shit. Fire! <laughs> Gary Payton Jr. Fire! <laughs> Last but not least, your good friend, Sean Kemp. Fire! <laughs> Hey man, we want to thank you for man for pulling up to the trash talk show. Bro. Always love, man. man. You originator of this shit, man. You made the game fun to watch. You was 
Like, you would get in the motherfucker head, man, and we gonna have that, like, I hate going back to this. Pat Bell, he talk a lot of shit, but he woofing. Yes, he sir. ain't stopping the motherfucking thing on me. <laughs> like, I see him talking shit, man, and, and Eagle, but his opponent got 45. <laughs> I done lost on the game and all this shit. God damn. Hey, man, he be getting his helmet tore off. Hey, but hey, he better stop all that shit. He better get back with to himself, man, God damn, because he get his helmet tore off. So, shit, you, I'm glad you said it. Hey, Pat, you know you my little youngster, man. You better get it, get it in. Get with it, baby. So, GP, you been great friends with the founder of Breakbeat. Dave yes, sir. Dave. How's yeah. that? Good, man. When me and Dave met, man, you know, he was on the Source, on the Source magazine and stuff like that. So I've been knowing him for a long time. So we done got a collaboration with this stuff, man. Okay. So me and him always try to partner with a lot of stuff. Oh. So, you know, he's like, he like a fam to me, man. He's a big fam fam. So you know how that go. Dope, dope, man. We're going to bring him on. Dang. Yes, sir. What up, big dogs? <laughs> What's up, legend? Hey, yes, sir. What's up? Yes, sir. How you yes, doing? Sir. <laughs> Remember this? Absolutely, easy, <laughs> easy, oh, man. Easy. easy, yeah. Hey, yes, sir. Man, thank you. So how long y'all go back, though? How long y'all go back? Shit, to the nineties, you know. The 90s. Yeah. yeah, when the source, you know, source magazine was our was our hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Just like Jet was was with, with to the, all the entertainers. Basketball was Source Magazine, so when it, if you get on the cover of Source Magazine, you just does shit. shit. You know what I'm saying? And then they, they wanted to grace you with the cover of magazine of Source, you the shit. So you know, Thanks. and Dave was the one who was putting all that together. So he he came at me twice. I think it was a how many times I was on the cover. Two, uh, two, one or two, yeah, yeah, two yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. had one when I was squatting down. Yeah, I had the mean mug. So yeah. it, it was kind of cool. Yeah. So it was a privilege always to be on the on the, on the cover of that. How you feel about the NBA players now? Allowed to smoke now. How you feel about that now? They, you know what I'm saying? Well, they ain't gonna be able to stop them. So they might as well let them smoke. It is le it's legal now. It's legal. You remember it wasn't legal, man, and then they was trying to think that it was something new. You're not gonna stop these kids from doing it. So you might as well say, hey, give it here, go ahead and do it, and don't hide it. But just don't come to work and do a big round practice. Ha. You know what I'm saying? Go and get your smoke in, man, and do whatever you want to do. Because some of just now, man, around and stuff is like, it's a cannabis, it's almost like a medical fact. Correct. It keeps people uh, uh, relaxed, it, it gets them off their, their, um, their soreness and their, and their aches and pains. Mm. So they can't do nothing about it. So I was great when the, when the NBA uh, said, yo, we ain't going to test for it no more. Let them do it. Just make sure you're responsible. Yeah. Yeah, man, I mean, just, you know, Gary's been one of those players and athletes that's always brought that hip hop culture and swag into sports. One of the first to do it, you know, coming from the Bay Area, uh, one of the, you know, foundations of hip hop from the beginning, going back to, you know, Too Short and all the other great artists that, that came through the Bay. Um, so, yeah, that was that was really how how we all connected because that was the beginning of hip hop and sports starting to come together. All the athletes kind of wanted to be rappers. The rappers wanted to be athletes. There was just a, a synergy there that, that started from Mike Tyson to, you know, Shaq to GP and so on. So it's great just to be, be here, you know, 30 years later yes, sir. and uh, still yes, doing sir. exciting things and still seeing this, this culture grow and have the influence that it's having. You ever pull up to the game bumping too short? That's all I do. <laughs> Give me these phone, even these phone. That's all I pump, man. You know, I'll be on the, on the plane, man, and on my iPad and stuff. That's all I pump. You know, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a West Coast dude, oh, man. I, I, I get out on the West Coast, man, especially my two guys, short and 40, you know what I'm saying? So I, I pump them a lot, and that's why I always love um, uh, D Mays because he didn't give a shit, you know, it was an artist or whatever, they, 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 they there, you know what I'm saying? If you hot and you're a great artist, he gonna give you love for it. So right. that's what it was, that's why that Source Magazine was like that. As you seen when we was on the cover of Me and 40, you know, I'm in the front, 40 in the back, and you know, we, we big brothers, you know what I'm saying? We brothers like that, we live right next door to each other. So right as of the day, so it's like, man, the Mays always brought it out because it was a hip hop culture. We started all that stuff. And then I think Allen Iverson one put it over the top with yes. all the tattoos, the jerseys, the cornrows. He threw it over the top to make it be acceptable in a sport. And then everybody started coming and then them rappers and stuff. That's why we see all the entertainers 
be at the games and they're on the front row, they're doing all that, but that's basketball. You know, football, you get to see them a little bit if they walk on the thing, but in our sport, right there on the front row. Front row right. right there on the front row. And they and they love to be there. So you know that's how it go. Yeah. So just trying to trying to bring that back now with breakbeat, you know, yeah. bringing people such as yourself and some of the other great, you know, talent that we have under the breakbeat umbrella, try to bring that authenticity yeah. back because as big as hip hop has become, um, you know, it's still a void for a, a platform like this that can bring that authenticity across the board. And uh, we're trying to do it and bring, bring us together like we're doing right here, the older and the younger sides of the generations of hip hop. You know, if you've grown up on hip hop, um, you know, you share so much, you know, mentally, the way you feel, the way you think about the world, the way you experience the world. And, um, you know, that's what Breakbeat is about, is trying to bring us a little more together from the older to the younger sides of, of the generations, you know. And I think, I think the Breakbeat thing is great because we got to have these younger kids understand what we was doing in the 80s and the 90s, how all this little hip hop really, really started, where it was really cool. This is where y'all came doing the same thing because you got to think about it all the dudes now is like sampling all the stuff in the 80s and the 90s exactly. all you're doing is sampling music and then y'all using it you know what i'm saying so we must have been doing something right in the 80s and the 90s you know what i'm saying <laughs> so i'm glad that they all can get the culture and then get the history of everything and let's put it together because you know the culture is going to keep going up Correct. Time is going to keep going, you know what I'm saying? And it's going to be different generations. And that's why I'm glad that the D. Mays is keep doing the same thing he's doing. He keep doing that 30 years later. He can keep being an influential of a lot of these guys, man, to let them understand, get them the history. Appreciate that. We appreciate you, GP and Dave. Oh, yeah. Appreciate y'all. Yeah. Appreciate you. Pulling appreciate up. you. Trash! 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 Did exactly that, yeah. Do you do you feel like do you feel like you're the best receiver in the game right now? Or no? Oh yeah. I feel I mean for myself, yes, I feel like I'm the best, but um, you know, with a lot of different people, different uh, you know, attributes, different teams, different scenarios. Um, I don't like doing no lists and no shit like that. Because uh, you know, I respect everybody around the league. Um so uh yeah, in my mind, yeah, I think I'm the best guy. Yeah.